Hey everybody, welcome back to another one of my vlogs where we are continuing our training for the New York City Half Marathon. Today, if you look back at our training plan, we have a tempo run and today it's going to be 40 minutes worth of running. And I just wanna take a little bit of time to break down the tempo run again, because I think there's a lot of different terms out there for what a tempo is or definitions of what a tempo run is. You know, if you look just on Google, the first three or four things you find are runs that are below lactate threshold, runs that are five to 10 seconds below 5K effort, runs that are five to 10, 15, 20 seconds faster than lactate threshold effort, runs that are at lactate threshold effort. There's a lot of different definitions out there. You know, you can see that on the Google page, even if I just share it right here. And I want to define kind of what I'm looking at when I'm thinking of a tempo run in my head. And I just want to start off with that today. So first things first, you know, I'm following a base plan off of a Hal Higdon plan. So if you remember the last time I had a tempo run, which should have been two weeks ago, I believe, I was kind of sharing this little hand-drawn chart that you can see. And the point was that the Hal Higdon tempo run is a buildup and then a cool down where you spend a certain portion of time, you know, at a moderate effort. And for me, a tempo run is a run that's at a, you know, a generally speaking moderate effort. It doesn't have to go to 5K, 10K pace at the peak of the Hal Higdon plan. It doesn't need to go to threshold pace because for me in my, in, you know, my training, what I've learned when I was working with a coach and trying to develop as a runner, a threshold run is a very specific type of run. And you can actually see next week, I actually added a threshold run into the training plan, which was not original to the Hal Higdon plan. Because again, to me, threshold is very specific. You're sitting right at your lactate, uh, kind of the level that your lactate will build up in your muscles. It's so specific that a tempo run to me is not a lactate threshold run necessarily. It's just a definition that's out there that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's just not how I think of a threshold run. And for me, a tempo run is just a moderate effort. And the Hal Higdon tempo run, while it kind of goes up and down, it's still crossing different points for me. Like again, once I get past like 8.45, 8.30 per mile, for me, that's tempo pace. That's a moderate effort. So even though I'm building up gradually, I cross that 8.45, 8.30 mark, and then I'm spending another 15, 20 minutes um, building up and then coming back down where I'm still passing that effort. I actually personally do pass threshold effort by going closer to 5K in the build up and cool down. But again, it's just, I want to clarify kind of what I see it as. It's just a moderate effort and specify again that in that little up and down um, arc that I'm kind of building into my run where I increase pace and decrease pace, I'm spending again 15, 20, 25 minutes as the runs get longer and longer, truly above that moderate effort pace for me and my current fitness. So it's a little bit confusing. There's so many terms and definitions out there. It's, it seems like no one has really agreed on officially what a tempo run is and the, the, the progressive and cool down tempo run is specific to the Hal Higdon plan. But again, to me, it meets my definition of a moderate effort run. It's just a continuous way of doing it. That's the way I look at it. And again, just wanted to kind of specify my definition of what I'm looking for in a tempo run. short on time and by time it means sunlight here so we're jumping right into everything and we're starting with our warm-up of course about 10 minutes of warm-up and what I'll do is I'll just put here kind of the target paces for the right sections of time and then we'll get right to it and I'll put up I guess we'll just talk about the paces again at the end of everything so stay tuned for the run and then the results definitely cold today and I didn't get really a good chance to warm up so a little bit of a shock to the body right now it's about 24 degrees and probably getting colder as the sun goes down and uh, 
Like I said, I just had to rush, so a little bit of a cold start. Hopefully we can warm up and get a decent workout in and hopefully we have some sun for most of the workout. There's so much ice and my hands are freezing. Oh man, my feet got wet. Ugh. Oh my goodness, my right hand froze up, but I have to tuck it into my glove. All right, we are settling into our cool down. My hands finally warmed up a little bit. That was pretty rough overall. I think I was going too fast in some places, not enough in others. And honestly, I don't even know what I was doing in some spots, just with all the ice and uh, yeah, my hand cold and I don't know. <laughs> that was a rough one. Okay, we just got back inside, but there are some things I want to share that are on my mind that I just don't want to forget. So I'm still in, you know, my running stuff. Uh, we'll talk about the paces. Um, it's hard again to share, you know, where I am in the arc throughout the run because ultimately I'm really just looking at the miles and the miles themselves don't really uh, reflect if I was accurately following that pace chart that I mentioned in the beginning where I wanted to kind of have these checkpoints at nine minutes, 8.45, 8.30 and so on. But I want to focus on, you know, kind of what I talked about in the beginning, how much time I spent in a good range. I think what reflects that most is that you can see in the paces for today's run, there are three miles total in the middle of this run where I'm below 840 per mile. And also three miles total where my heart rate is above 155 and two miles in full where my heart rate is above 160. So that's definitely, you know, close to 20 minutes of, you know, above 160 beat per minute heart rate, which is a good moderate effort. And on top of that, almost, you know, probably 27 to 30 minutes or so of being around 155 beats per minute or higher. So it's a good solid chunk of time at that moderate heart rate. You know, it's a weird way of doing it with the Hal Higdon arc, but ultimately what I think the goal for me is today is just to work at a moderate effort. And I think that shows in three of the mile paces where you can just see overall I was moving pretty quick for myself, you know, again, moderate pace, moderate effort, and the heart rate also shows that moderate effort. So I think that's everything I can really share about today. Again, sorry if it was a little long trying to clarify things in the beginning, but I think it just helps some people try and, you know, who are trying to understand, you know, what I'm doing with the arc. Uh, is the Hal Higdon way the only way to do the tempo run? Absolutely not. Again, I think it's more important that I spent time in certain heart rate ranges and at certain paces overall as I was progressing and, you know, regressing through the paces throughout the run today. So with that, that's all I have. We'll be back tomorrow with a nice easy three mile run, a recovery run from our effort today. And I actually have some changes in my training plan that I'll share with you tomorrow since it's a pretty basic run. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe down below if you're not already. And I hope to see you in the next video.